If you're relatively new to cameras, it might be baffling to discover the price for a 50mm lens could range anywhere from $250 all the way to $2,000. Well, one of the things you can almost guarantee on the more expensive option is better image quality. But what does that even mean? How do you judge the image quality of a lens? Well, let's break that down together in this video. Many people equate image quality to sharpness, and although there really is quite a bit more to it than that, it is perfectly reasonable to think sharpness first, because it is one of the very first things you would notice. We also refer to this sharpness as the lens's resolution, not the same way we refer to 1080p and 4K as resolutions, but the optical capabilities of the lens to resolve fine detail. A high resolution lens would reveal texture and detail in a crystal clear fashion, whereas these details may appear smudgy on a lower resolution lens despite being perfectly in focus. A lens's resolution at its widest possible aperture is what people are mainly concerned about, as it's pretty much a given that sharpness will only improve as you stop a lens down. That is until you hit the diffraction limit, but that's a whole different topic. One more thing about lens sharpness is how they tend to be better in the center of the frame compared to the edges. But in those edges is also where you'll find vignetting. That refers to how the edges of your image appear slightly darkened. Generally, we say a lens is better if it exhibits very little vignetting, but similar to sharpness, vignetting improves drastically as you stop down the aperture on your lens. These days, with everything being digital, vignetting is actually a lot less of an issue because they are extremely easy to remove in post. Most cameras even have profiles built in, which allow for real-time correction of lens vignetting. In some cases, a bit of vignetting actually looks quite pleasing because it draws your attention towards the center of the frame, but just as easy as it is to remove vignetting in post, it's actually similarly easy to add some back in. Up next, we have chromatic aberration. Now, I know it's very technical sounding, but it's also referred to as color fringing. You've probably seen it before, and it's these green or magenta edges which seemingly ooze out of your subjects. They are the most visible around high contrast areas of your image, especially where your subject is transitioning in and out of focus. Some lenses suppress chromatic aberration better than others, and some subjects have a tendency to bring out chromatic aberration more than others. But as long as it doesn't get to the point of being distracting, it's actually perfectly normal to have some amount of chromatic aberration visible. The next aspect of lens quality is somewhat contested because it can either be seen as a defect or a desired effect. I'm talking about lens flare. Now, modern lens manufacturers work very hard to design lenses that suppress flare when you point your camera into a light source. The good thing about this is, the contrast within your frame is very well retained. There's no haze of light washing across your image. On the other hand, some lenses are desired for their tendency to flare. These lenses are known to exhibit beautiful, unique flare patterns that can be used to achieve a very stylistic look. But unless that look is something you're intentionally going for, it is generally preferred to have lenses that exhibit as little flare as possible. Now here's something about image quality that's not talked about nearly as often as the other aspects, and it's something called coma. This is typically a particular area of concern in astrophotography. If you've got a tiny speck of light, like a star in the edge of your frame, a lens that exhibits coma will make it look as if that star's got wings coming out of it. It's no longer a perfect white dot. An optically superior lens would not have as much coma, and that star will look closer to the clean bright dot it should be. Finally, there's lens distortion. There are two categories of distortion, pincushion distortion, where subjects appear to get stretched out towards the edges, and barrel distortion, where subjects appear to bulge out in the middle of the frame. These effects are not desired, so lenses with minimal distortion are always preferred. But again, with digital photography, lens distortions can quite easily be corrected with software, and many cameras have the ability to make these corrections at the time of shooting. So in a brief nutshell, those were six aspects one would typically look at to gauge the optical quality of a lens. With lenses and optics, the rabbit hole can get quite deep, so I hope you found this scratching of the surface useful. My name is Z, and I'll see you around.